everybody. Uh, my name is Nicole Horn, and I was super honored to be selected to be the juror and judge for the FCCA Faces and Figures show. The amazing work here, it was hard to choose who to choose to be in here. Um, my first passion in my art has been doing the face. And when I create a piece myself, I wanna bring across an emotion or something that brings the viewer in. And there's nothing like the face for me to showcase our lives. And when we submit work to a show, it's so difficult because it is just one person's opinion me on any given day. And the work that's here is just the work that spoke to me. And when you're making work and submitting it, please keep going. If you didn't get chosen or if you didn't get an award, um, it takes time and it can be another judge on another day that says this is here and why it's here. But today I'm gonna to talk about the pieces that I chose and why I chose them. And just thanks for all the artists for submitting and being brave and exposing yourself to someone saying something about your work. Um, it's easy to keep it hidden and to be shy, but just start, submit. Please look at FCCA, it's an amazing venue to showcase your work. And I hope to see your work hanging here. So I wanna to start today talking about an honorable mention that was awarded to Red by Rebecca, Rebecca Carpenter. So when I'm looking at photography, I love that media, and I'm looking for a story in the photograph, um, really any piece of art that I choose. And this story I thought was beautifully done. It's the figure and we don't see the face. So how do we create emotion when we don't see the face of the figure? And the elegance that this photographer chose with the hand gesture and just the little lift of the heel the motion in this is just so beautifully captured. There's even like the gesture of the movement of the dress and it, that alone could be a great feature, but then the choice to incorporate the movement on the wall, that story together, like that um, compositional choice to include this background and this atmosphere makes this whole piece sing for me. Um, also the, Res the reservation of color just in the dress and this pop of red, that classic combination of black and white with a hint of red just is, is the cherry on top for me. So well done. And I wanna talk next about um, Carl II by Kath Luce. And this got an honorable mention in this year's um, Faces and Figures show at FCCA. So the beautiful thing about this piece is it seems on first glance like a study, but what an elevated study of portraiture and restraint. The shadow work and the colors in the shadow are placed just stunningly. So, you know, when I'm doing life work, I can tell like this was done with thought and purpose and not just going through the motions, but really learning some of those details of anatomy and sculpting this beautifully, you know, done chiseled face. Um, just amazing piece. And I really appreciate also the intention with the atmosphere and what's around the portrait. So I think this artist really considers the whole, not just a beautifully rendered face and an ear and the shoulders, but also what's happening around the form and that strengthens the whole piece. Okay, the next honorable mention award I wanna talk about was, is Dreaming by Carly Bridges. So I selected this piece for a few reasons and I just, I wanna, the first impression was so bold with the use of color. And the gesture of the figure is so beautifully handled. And we are drawn by the different directions of the hands and the eyes and then the atmosphere 
of the bubbles or these shapes um, in the background. So when I immediately saw this piece, I felt a story and I connected to the story that I brought to the piece. And I think when people are making art, the artist has their own interpretation of what they're trying to say, but it's really completed that circle when the viewer also sees the piece. And by choosing to enter into a competition and have somebody else bring their perspective to it, the story gets bigger. And so when the artist has their, their story and then a viewer brings another interpretation, I love that idea of that richness, that you're building this beautiful thing around a piece and this dialogue between people, artists, your community around this concept of dreaming. And so for me, this was, you know, I saw this girl and I identified immediately that that could be me. And you have this dream and you're trying to reach it, but you're afraid and you're holding back. And those eyes are like, I want the dream. And am I brave enough to think about going after the dream? Not sure if that was um, Carly's intention, but the story here was so strong and compelling. And all of these components, the gesture of the face, the hands, the colors, the combination of the colors of the face and the hands with the background, um, that atmosphere, I think was really, really beautifully handled. So thank you for that story. So the next piece I'm gonna talk about is our um, last honorable mention. And the piece is titled Time Slips Away by Kevin Wichello. And I chose this piece based on the scale and the amazing light choices that this artist used. There's an intimacy here with choosing this scale that brings you right in to the expressions on these faces. And there's a historical nod here because of some of the clothing but there's also a universal and timeless feel about these figures in the situation and the way of you know approaching this light where we bounce from this gentleman's face over to this face and back and forth and there's a connection here but he does it without them even looking at each other and we want to think about you know we're looking at this piece like what are what's the dialogue here and the use of monochrome, the black and white, has that sense of nostalgia and timelessness, and it also gives it that emotive feeling. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about too is how technically beautifully this is done. You know, the mark making, the use of composition here, um, really brings me into this piece. Um, very, very beautifully done. So my third place award is going to Hell Hath No Fury Like a Woman Scorn by Rachel Hodge. So what an incredibly dynamic piece this is and commanding attention when you walk into the room. I think this choice for splitting up and fracturing, you know, the surface, so well thought out. And this feels the energy and the placement of this, you know, you feel the tension, all over and it doesn't but it's not monotonous um the use of the color choice of course the red for the fury is brilliant um i think the rendering here too she did such a great job with teeth teeth are incredibly difficult to portray but so important to that expression coming from the mouth to show that anger and fury um you know her eyes too are just incredibly expressive and we don't normally see a lot of expression in eyes, but her use of the brow and the wrinkles are just, you know, masterfully done. So our second place winner is Phyllis Grozus, and the title of this beautiful piece is Hope Incubating. When I saw this piece in person, I was thrilled to see the sensitivity of the mark making that I thought I saw in the digital entry, and it didn't disappoint. So the whole media choice for this piece is so perfect to convey that message of a mother and child and the hope incubating. And at first glance, it looks a little dark. The image has this really solid graphic dark element in the beginning of her dress and this background element. And I really think that contrast of this darkness makes the brights even lighter. And that concept of hope 
is even heightened by that idea of the darkness. So this conceptually is an incredibly strong piece and compelling and the softness of the face and the delicacy of also how that figure is handled is just thrilling to see up close and in person. And without further ado, I really want to announce my first place winner, which is Self 2022 by Catholics. So when I initially saw this show, I hate to say it, but when I was scrolling through all the selections, I almost knew she was gonna be my top pick. And her work just is incredible. When I see the skill that she has with multiple mediums across, you know, multiple, the whole figure, the face, she obviously has a grasp on classical still skills. Her concepts now is choosing what media best tells the story. So when I chose the first place winner, I love that she chose to use the digital media to do her self portrait. It's so appropriate for her age and showing herself as this place in time. It's so present and yet timeless because there's a nod to her classical skills. Her, her knowledge even extends to the background being a little greenish in, in color. And that just heightens the flesh tones and those beautiful, you know, orange and pink colors. So those attention, you know, pieces of attention to detail really are striking for me. I also like a piece that begs you to have a dialogue with yourself, with other people around you. And I think the use of Kath putting a mask on her self portrait, it really begs the question, are we still in a place where masks are needed? And how did the pandemic impact all of us? And we all have our own stories that we can bring to mask wearing. If we did it, if we didn't. And I love that this piece, it continues on. So even after you leave it, you kind of want to think back to the concepts that she presented. And her gaze, I think is another significant idea because her expression at first, it's subtle. And you think, is she, you know, excited about her self-portrait? Is it contemplative? And those nuances, when it is so, I guess, you know, like reserved. And you get to make your own interpretation. So there's an ambiguity and a specificity and these ideas that you really want to go back to and like, if you only have the eyes for an expressive portrait, what do they say?
Fredericksburg Center for the Creative Arts, where art and history meet.